Hey today guys, I thought I'd uh, just show you what I'm working on. Today is July 4th. Give you a little preview of my messy workbench. But you know, hey, I got projects going, so that's what I'm uh, working on today. Um, got my hammers over here. Got a Viking sax I've been working on. Uh, got to do some cleanup on that. Forge that out a little bit more. You can see, you know, forge weld needs... Uh, hammered on a little bit more when draw that I'm gonna make this back part just a square Kind of hammer Okay, because I want to be able to actually take this out in the wild Use this as a hatchet, but also if one if I'm setting up a tent or whatever need to drive tent space Tent stakes then I can do that right here uh, And then I'll put a handle on it got a hammer that I need um, to handle uh, here's a cut off here. I'm going to make this into a small puko knife, uh, everyday carry kind of thing. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do with this. Probably a butt cap. This is old um, trophies or football medals that I had. Not that I, not that I earned, by the way. Uh, just that uh, I had laying around. I'm working on a touch mark for myself, and that's pretty crappy right there. So I've got to do some work on that. I'm going to sand that off flush again. Um, do some other stuff. Okay, this right here is from wrought iron. I know I don't know if you can see the pattern in there. No, probably not. Just see the scratches. But anyway, that's wrought iron, and what that's going to be is the hand guard. Hold on, sorry about that jarring thing there. The hand guard for this, which is the katana that my daughter and I are making together. Okay, um, we've got some hand sanding to do. Then we're going to take this right here and uh, the, the high temp uh, stove and gasket cement. We're actually going to do a uh, hamon on this. Um, that's kind of a work in progress. Then right here, these are bits and pieces that I've had left over from a smelt I did a while ago. And this is what the, uh, what the actual stove you know first initial piece looks like when it comes off of there it's actually bigger like this this is probably you know part of the bloom there but because it's so valuable i did this a while ago i made a knife out of it for my buddy zane zane the man anyway he's the one who helped me you know get access to the 100 ton press uh, anyway but that's what it looks like and then you know you can see that it's steel on the back there and then you take this you fold them flatten them out you guys have probably seen videos of that done flatten them out into pieces like so and these used to be you know these are small pieces that came off I actually made the knife out of this stuff that was much bigger okay well my filming is awesome today anyway Flatten that out, you know, here's one last cake of it, basically, that I'm, I'm going to forge weld all this back together. Maybe keep this piece just for demo. I'm going to do another smelt this summer if I can find the time to do that. All right, uh, let's see here. What else do I have over here? Oh, my super water bottle. There's some rawhide there for backing a bow that I'm making, a long bow. Now, here's some bits and pieces of things that I... Oh. Horse head bottle opener. Yeah, that looks terrible. I can't see the the detail. Yeah, it's pretty detail-y. Not really. Anyway, uh, some guards and some other things that I've made. Melted out. Copper, you know, cut off things that I'm going to put back in and melt out again. I'm, I am not. I am not a guy that does casting. Uh, you know, that that's for the, the experts. Okay. Um, I like playing around with it. Um, here's some cable, cable Damascus. I've got four or five pieces of that cut off, ready to go. Um, anyway, and this little baby knife here that I did some file work on. Um, I don't know if you can see that, but uh, there we go. Did some file work on. I'm going to hand sand that. Uh, got a little Puko type handle. Got bone, black spacer. Um, I did melt this out. That's part of Part of probably you know that right there okay and uh, you know I, I, I don't necessarily like the way this turned out if it were me again I would go ahead and if I did it over I would put that closer I mean I would take the the spacer the material the brass or bronze or the 
come out uh, amalgamation there and I put it up tight against there I think as a matter of fact I may take a hammer and just pound this off because I did glue it on um, Man, I don't want to lose that bone though that looks pretty sweet on there anyway I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna I'm gonna do something with that but this is what I'm doing today so I've got this here what this is is a, is a chunk of this stainless steel it's three or four stainless so it's non-magnetic but it is very very stainless okay stain resistant properties I've got this Bowie knife that I've been working on for a while now and I'm gonna put this on there today um, it is basically oh a half inch thick it's about 12 14 millimeters if I understand it right anyway and what I've been doing is actually just sanding this to fit right in here I've got a little got a little notch uh, I've been filing this so it's kind of a file fit yeah, you can see that I'm not quite there. Holy cow. This whole filming thing with one hand sucks. Uh, anyway, so what I've got there is, uh, you know, I've got a little ways to go, probably, I don't know, an eighth, three sixteenths of an inch or so. And then I'm going to take these antler handles and put those on, those scales. So the antler's going to go on. This one's going to go on like so. And just butt up against that if I can get a good fit there get a nice good tight fit on there and then uh, and I'm just gonna finish off this back end with just the amp okay you grind it down thin it down so it fits nice in the hand and then I'm gonna fill this with this bad boy here and then sand it off now That'll give a watertight, a completely watertight finish, even though that's a porous material. That's the inside of that antler. That bone, I kind of like the look of it. Uh, I wanted this a little bit more rustic. See, I've hand sanded this down to 220 grit. Yeah, I've left a few hammer marks in it here or there. I've talked about the fact that I don't like mirror finishes, mirror polishes. If I want that knife, I'll just go buy one. You know, I want something different. And that's what I do. Um, anyway, then I'll get done with that one today. And I'll go ahead and finish this one out. Now, my wife suggested that I name this the mermaid knife because of the scales on it. And uh, I don't know if it's the mermaid or the merman. It doesn't really matter. But, you know, I'm going to work on that today, too. See how things go there. Anyway, that's what I'm doing for the fourth. And, uh, oh, people have asked me why I put these on there. I put golf balls on there. Well, I love golfing. Okay, I'm terrible. I suck, but I love it. But this may be the best use of a golf ball that I could find. Because one, when I am filing, and I hold on here. Sorry about that. Okay, so I put this in my hand. It fits right there in the palm of my hand, and I can push file very easily, and I don't get jabbed into the palm of my hand with this right with the end of the file I can push on that all day now I've already got like you know stuff cracking and breaking on my hands anyway so you know if you haven't done that give it a try I have it on all my files are the files that I use the most um, the round files if I'm doing any kind of uh, any kind of like uh, oh I don't know what am I saying here uh, any kind of vine work, file work on the on the spine, you know, I do that. If I'm sharpening my chainsaw with it, I do that. Um, even though I don't chainsaw much. Anyway, um, that's that. Oh, one other thing. I got my hammer here. Putting a dragon design on it. Uh, so I'm going to take this paper off and then go ahead and uh, get the battery charger out. And you can see there where I've ground through the paint. I'm going to etch through that, etch that design down into my hammer. The one that I use. Then I'm going to get rid of the paint because that's kind of not super manly looking for me. But anyway, have a great 4th of July, everybody.